Hi everyone, my name is Natalie. So today I thought that I would do a non-fiction book haul. This is something that I've been doing in the last couple of months. I feel like I always say a couple of months specifically. Obviously book hauls are sort of the regular trade in uh, booktube, um, but for a while I've been doing book hauls specifically for the non-fiction books that I buy. Uh, mostly because it feels like uh, non-fiction is still a genre that is either less read or that is often um, portrayed as something intimidating for people or at least I think a lot of people feel that nonfiction is intimidating and that is not the case at all. There's so much within nonfiction and I think a lot of the um, stereotypes surrounding uh, nonfiction is just that it's uh, these academic writings or that it's history or something very serious in tone and in topic. Um, but I read a lot of, or at least I buy a lot of uh, various kinds of nonfiction books. So I've found that I enjoy doing these book hauls to show you some of the things that nonfiction can offer um, that you might not necessarily think of when you think of nonfiction. Um, so I hope that they have been fun to watch, uh, but today I, I think this might be the last one in a while because I haven't been, I've been trying to slow down uh, the acquiring of books that I do, mostly just that I want to spend uh, some of that money to, towards other things and I also have a lot of books on my shelves. Uh, so I think that it might be uh, the case that this is one of the last ones that I do for a while. I will probably be buying some nonfiction books fairly soon, but they are part of a project that I'm ho hopefully going to do. Um, so I will talk about those in a separate video. I'm going to show off two books that I've out from the library at the moment that are also nonfiction, and they're both memoirs. Because after reading I Am, I Am, I Am by Maggie O'Farrell, I was really in the mood to read more memoirs, and I was looking for other books um, in this genre that my library had that sounded interesting to me. And I think I love, uh, I like memoirs that have something different to them, some kind of central theme that feels new to me. So uh, the first one I have is The Hate Race by Maxim Ben McClark. And this is about the author growing up in Australia and it's also about the racism that she faced in Australia. So it's um, part of the fact, uh, part of it that feels uh, different to me is that I've not really read many books uh, by Australian writers or set in Australia. For some reason it just have, hasn't uh, been the case. Um, and also I don't really know about the the experiences of someone growing up in, with a different uh, ethnicity or race in Australia. So I think this will be uh, an interesting perspective that I haven't really been exposed to before. Uh, and I've heard good things about this through booktube, especially uh, Mercedes from Mercedes Bookish Musings. The other one um, is called All You Can Ever Know. Um, by Nicole Chung, which is a memoir about growing up as an adopted child. I think I've, I, I feel like I've been exposed to various uh, stories about uh, families who adopt uh, from the parents perspective, um, the actual adoption process, uh, maybe things surrounding the uh, failures uh, in conceiving their own child. But I don't think I've ever really read or been exposed to the story from the adopted child themselves and especially uh, the experiences of growing up as an adopted child looking different from your adoptee family. So this author has Korean descent and she grew up in a family um, that was white and in a community that was um, ma majority white so she was basically the only Asian person that she knew growing up and she uh, sort of thought, thinks about that in this memoir. A memoir that I have very recently uh, been given actually. I, I was gifted this by my friend and this is The Shaking Woman or History of My Nerves by Siri Husfit. So it's about her own experiences and also the research that she does in trying to figure herself out and what happened to her uh, health-wise. I am collecting all of Siri Husfit's books because I love her as a writer. Uh, so I've been looking for all of her books in secondhand 
shops recently and so my friend got this to me and I'm very excited to have it. I have quite a few biography-like books. Uh, they are mostly sort of overlapping with biography and something else. Um, but I guess I, in general I have found that I really like biography as a genre within nonfiction uh, because I think it allows you to have this personal uh, narrative and pull to a book um, while also learning about something different. But this one is Strange Beauty, Murray Gelman and the Revolution in the 20th Century Physics by George Johnson, which is apparently about someone who was very influential in physics uh, and I think he's compared to Einstein at the back. Um, I don't know enough about the physics field to really know who this person is, uh, but I thought in general I just want to learn more about physics. I want to read more about physics. Um, and I read my first sort of chemistry uh, nonfiction earlier in this year and really enjoyed the experience. I think in general I have always found the natural sciences quite intimidating. Now I'm at the point that I really want to get into them, um, but just don't really know where to start. So I found this in a local thrift store and uh, a local secondhand shop and decided to give it a go because again it is a combination of science, sort of popular science and a biography. So hopefully it is um, hopefully it is accessible. Uh, but if you do have any recommendations for accessible um, pop science kind of books within physics, do let me know. Uh, the other one is also that blend with biography and science and it is The Fossil Hunter by Shelley Emling, which is a biography of Mary Anning, a very brief one, sadly. Um, but I read a fictionalized account of Mary Anning's life at the in March or April uh, called Remarkable Creatures by Tracy Chevalier and I really enjoyed reading that one and after that I was looking for biographies or nonfiction books about Mary Anning and this was one of the ones that came up uh, and Mary Anning was a fossil hunter she was really her discoveries uh, of fossils had a major impact on the way that we look at the natural world how we understand it uh, so I find her as a figure really interesting and I'm looking forward to reading something uh, on the factual sense about her. Another sort of biography slash history kind of book is Bury My Heart at Wounded Knee by Dee Brown, an Indian history of the American West. And I've heard about this through I think book two but mostly just in general on um, various, I, I feel like I've seen book reviews and things like that on the internet and whatnot. It says at the back, first published in 1970, Dee Brown's brutal and compelling narrative changed the way people thought about the original inhabitants of America and focus attention on a national disgrace. Uh, so it seems to be sort of a classic within books about uh, indigenous cultures, especially in the US, and again something that I'm not very familiar with, so I think uh, it will be a good place to sort of get some grounding into the subject. The last biography I have is a Swedish one and it's called Justa Ekman, Farbron som inte ville vara stor by Klaus Gustafsson. This is the title of this in English would basically be um, the old man who or the uncle who didn't want to grow up um, which just reminds me of Peter Pan um, but this is about a, a actor he has done several movies and I think he also worked in the theater uh, a lot. Um, I am mostly familiar with him through um, a series of movies called uh, Jonsson Ligan. Just in general I was interested in this author because this year he came out with a new release, one of his new releases is a biography about Gunilla Bergström who is the creator of Alfons Orbay and I love um, the Alfons Orbay uh, picture books so I've been uh, looking forward to his new biography and there, he's also written a one about Monica Sättelund who is one of my favorite artists so I'm, I'm interested in the author particularly but I've also been intrigued to read more about Swedish actors and um, in general sort of influential people people in Swedish history and culture and then we have the random pile so it's actually I think this pile is the best uh, explanation of my tastes in nonfiction uh, so first we have Soviet Space Dogs by Olesya Turkina uh, this is a book about the space dogs, um, as you ki kind of uh, can tell from the title, um, and I've been wanting this for a long, long time, uh, but I went to the local science center 
these this past weekend with my friend and uh, the store they have they sell various books and uh, other things as well. So this is about Belka and Strelka and I thought it would be a fairly uh, good time to read this book since uh, this year is the 50, 50 year anniversary of the moon landing and I've been sort of in the mood to read more space nonfiction. Uh, so yes, it's obviously right up my alley. Dogs plus uh, space you probably can't go wrong. Also, it includes, I know I've seen the sample of this, it includes like uh, vintage um, posters and illustrations of the space dogs and the space dog programs, uh, which I am a sucker for vintage advertisement and illustrations. I'm looking forward to finally opening, the, opening this because as you can tell, it still has uh, the plastic on because I haven't, I haven't opened it since I bought it this weekend. Another book that I also bought uh, in a similar situation is Animals Without Backbones by Ralph Bushbaum. Uh, it's a Pelican vintage and um, I think this is the first volume in a few or two. Each volume of Animals Without Backbones gives a complete account of the various groups of animals it deals with and so it can be read by itself. These two the two together give a comprehensive survey of the in invertebra members of the animal kingdom. Um, and, I mean, first of all, I love the vintage style of this. I went to the Natural History Museum with my friend uh, a couple of weeks back and um, they have this... It's not really a store because they, they don't have anyone working there. It's just a, a room filled with books. Uh, you can uh, pay them uh, in like a tip jar kind of situation. Uh, and part of it is just that I am collecting various books on the natural world and all kinds of animals. This is definitely outside of my comfort zone when it comes to animal nonfiction. But still, it is animal nonfiction with a very small scale of life and the vintage style of this just made me want to have it. Illustrations and pictures as well, which is always nice. A book that I got entirely because of Andrea from Infinite Text is The Work of the Dead uh, by Thomas Lacour, which is um, a cultural history of mortal, mortal remains. So she, um, Andrea from Infinite Text, does a series of videos talking about books about death. Uh, a lot of them are nonfiction books and a lot of them I think I think sound fantastic. Uh, I am really interested in reading about death and death, death attitudes, death ceremonies and things like that. Um, but this is one that she personally recommended to me and uh, I bought it uh, immediately after that. So the funny thing about this is that I bought it secondhand and the only notation in the book is uh, one place in the index. I'm gonna see if I can find it so I can show you um, because it made me laugh. Uh, I, can't, I can't tell if you can see that, I hope you can. Um, but yeah, it made me laugh uh, and wonder who owned this book before me and for what purpose. Uh, but I am so looking forward to reading this one. I think it will probably have to wait uh, until the, the summer so that I can sit down with it because I don't think it's very Portable book. Uh, the same could be said for this one, which is The Art of Beatrix Potter by Emily Zack, or the text is by Emily Zack. And this is basically an art book of various illustrations and sketches and uh, photographs of Beatrix Potter. So I recently read a, a biography about her. I know I've talked about that several times already, but she is one of my favorite artists. I love her il illustrations of nature in general. Um, and this is just a, a collection of various things that she that she's done. And it's so beautifully put together. She did a lot of like studies of of animals and of plants and things like that uh, and I, I'm sort of a sucker for botanical sketches and nature sketches and things like that especially the vintage kind so um, I decided to reward myself with this book and hopefully I can sort of sit down with it after the term is over as um, it's just a good way to sort of celebrate um, but I'm so looking forward to getting to this one because it's so stunning um, and the last one that I want to talk about is called Waterfall of Stars um, and this one I haven't got yet but it is on its way to me 
It's a memoir about the author moving to an island that is very isolated from uh, from other people. It's, I think there are very, very few inhabitants, if any, um, human inhabitants, uh, aside from her and her boyfriend who moved there to sort of take care of the place, I think. Um, and they moved to this island to do some kind of work and it's a kind of long-term commitment. I think it's about 10 years of her life that she lives there. And the memoir is just about that, uh, that experience. And I mean, there's so many things that, it, that draws me to this book. And I've heard really good things about this from uh, Charlotte of Tired Mama Tries to Read. I will link her review in the description. You should definitely watch that. If you're at all interested in this book, definitely go watch her video about it because it's totally sold me. So I bought it immediately after watching that video and I will be body reading this book in June with Andrea from Infinite Text that I mentioned earlier. So very, very excited to get to that one. So those are all of the books that have uh, somehow made it to my shelves recently. Uh, let me know if you've read any of these books and your thoughts about them. And also let me know if you would like to read any of these books. Um, I always love to hear from you and um, also feel free as always to recommend me any nonfiction books that you think I would really like based on these books. I hope you're having a fantastic day and I will talk to you soon.